हेलो माय सर्स नवीन कुमार सैनी इन द कोर्स वायरलेस एंड मोबाइल कम्युनिकेशन इन द लेक्चर टू टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द स्प्रेड स्पेक्ट्रम मोडुलेशन सो दिस टेक्निक इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द टेक्नोलॉजी इन द सी डी एम ए सिस्टम सो दिस टेक्निक इज यूज इन द सी डी एम ए सिस्टम एंड इन दैट हाउ वी कैन यूज दैट ओके सो फॉर दैट वट इज फर्स्ट थिंग इज वट इज स्प्रेड स्पेक्ट्रम मोडुलेशन so in a very brief manner if i want to say about that if we have any message signal right so whose bandwidth is b and if we i can modulate in that way i can spread the bandwidth of the modulating signal right so that is nothing but the spread spectrum modulation so in this so what is the meaning of that so this technique basically or the method is basically is a signal generated with a wider bandwidth when it is passing through the modulated signal that is the pn sequence so this signal looks like in the diagram we can see that here b is the modulated signal whose bandwidth is uh, b right and it is passing through the spreading process this spreading process is nothing but simply multiplying the this bandwidth uh, b signal with the spreading code so this spreading code is nothing but the pn codes so these are the pn codes okay so we multiply this pn code with the message signal or the bit of the message signal and the bandwidth of the original message signal is now spread it out so this is the output of this uh, spreading process so this one is a bss so this bss must be greater than the b uh, b uh, b bandwidth of the original message signal okay so we can see it here right so after the signal which is created by the source so a spreading process which occur through the spreading code and the it spread the bandwidth of the message signal so this is the overall picture of the spread spectrum modulation so in this uh, what are the advantages of uh, this techniques right so first thing which uh, which is very important uh, why we require this first one is the highly resistant to noise and the interference so by using this spread spectrum modulation technique which is used in uh, in this cdma system which is very very highly resistive to the noise and the interference right and in this the if when we are recollecting the signal or the spread signal of the signal so in this case the noise and the interference also be may be increased right so for them we can uh, this noise or the interference can be into the background so we will take this parameter in uh, upcoming uh, i mean in this uh, slides as well processing gain so how this mitigate uh, the interference and how we can get the original signal based on the uh, processing gain second advantage this was the first one and second advantage is a difficult to intercept so as if we talk about this uh, this point so in this way uh, when we have any signal right and we want to secure that signal by the intruder so in, because if we know the uh, carrier frequency at the if the third party or the intruder has the carrier frequency through which it can intercept the signal so to avoid this issue this we use the ssm spread spectrum modulation in which the pm code sequence are used so in this the detecting the original signal is very very tough when we have the spreaded signals okay so if we have the one bit whose bandwidth was previously originally this bandwidth was one and it is spreaded to the bss so this bandwidth uh, when it is enhance the bandwidth uh, so in this case it is very tough to intercept the original signal third one is the minimal noise to the narrow frequency okay so uh, this uh, we divide the complete wide band into the smaller chunks of the bands as well right so that uh, we can mitigate the frequencies and we, uh, we can mitigate the noises or the interferences and important another important point which is the uh, its spread spectrum which is uh, nothing but the wide band modulation techniques are used for that okay so there are some features of the ssm so first of the feature which is very important so first is the operation with a low energy spectral density 
सेकेंड वन इज द मल्टीपल एक्सेस कैपेबिलिटी विदाउट एक्सटर्नल कंट्रोल राइट थर्ड फीचर ऑफ द एस एस एम इज द सिक्योरिटी सो एज आई सेट इट इज वेरी वेरी टफ टू इंटरसेप्ट बाई द इंट्रूडर और द एक्सटर्नल सोर्सेज और द थर्ड पार्टी सोर्सेज ऑफ द मैसेज सिग्नल ओके सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर ऑफ द एस एस एम टेक्निक देन नेक्स्ट इज द एंटी जेमिंग कैपेबिलिटी and then multi path protection and finally the ranging so these are the features of the ssm technique or the spread spectrum modulation so in the generalized categorization of the ssm we we categorize this one into two forms first one is the averaging second one is the avoiding system so in the averaging system what uh, they have done in that the, they have averaged out the interference right so interference is averaged out and in that way it is easy to uh, intercept the it is easy to uh, find the interference level okay so the example for that averaging system is the direct sequence uh, direct sequence system so this direct sequence system is nothing but when we use the pn code for the ssm so we call that as the direct sequence system second one is the avoidance avoidance system in which the reduction of the uh, interference occurs because a signal is made to the avoid the interference so there is a difference between this averaging system and the avoiding system in the averaging system what happen we average the interferences right okay so second is the avoiding system in which the signal itself avoid the interference to in include into it okay so the example for the avoidance system is the frequency hopping and the time hopping system time hopping and the chipping systems okay so these three are the examples for the avoidance system frequency hopping time hopping and the chipping system so these are the broad classification of the ssm or spread spectrum modulation schemes systems so to understand that uh, ssm as we have discussed about direct sequence so in this we use the pn codes so a simple class, uh, simple uh, how to transmit the uh, ssm so for that one in simply we said we have the spreading process in that we give the input as the original signal and we multiply with the pn code so this pn code multiply with the modulo to sum and this is nothing but the xor operation okay so output of this process is the pn sequence so this is the method of finding the pn sequences so we can understand this one if we have this message signal right so this is a message signal in this message signal we see the data that is your 0 and 1 0 1 0 like that so these logics are there so in the pn code sequence we have to use the pn code sequence so that we can get the ssm right so uh, we are taking the uh, pn code that is 0011101 right again we are taking the pn code for this and again we are taking the pn code for this and this one so we are applying the xor operation or the modulo to sum operation between the original message signal and with the pn codes right when we see this then uh, as we are uh, very much aware about the xor operation what is the xor operation in that when we have a and b if both are zero then the output that will be zero when we have the zero one then output will be one when we have the one zero output will be one when we both are ones in that case output will be zero so this is the xor operation when we are performing between a and b right so we can say here when we have a data that is a zero and this is the zero zero then output will be zero 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 output will be zero 0 1 output will be 1 0 1 output will be 0 uh, 1 and so on okay so in this case what we are getting when we are have the original signal 0 bit in that case when we multiply with this pn sequence the same signal we will get it right so the same pn sequence we will get at the output when we have the zero is transmitted or the original signal when we have the logic 1 so when we do the xor operation between logic 1 and this pn code so we can see that is the 1 and this is the 0 so in this case the output will be 1 right when it is the 1 it is 0 output will be 1 when it is 1 or 
एक्सॉल ऑपरेशन विद द वन आउटपुट विल बी जीरो वेन इट इज वन इट इज वन आउटपुट विल बी जीरो ओके सो इफ इट इज इट इज वन इट इज वन आउटपुट विल बी जीरो एंड सो ऑन ओके सो वी कैन सी इन दिस वी आर गेटिंग द इनवर्स ऑफ द पी एन सिक्वेंस राइट सो वेन द जीरो इज देयर देन वेन वी आर परफॉर्मिंग द पी एन कोड ऑपरेशन in this multiplication we are getting the same pn sequence when the zero is when one is the logic so when we performing the logic one with xor operation with the pn code then we will get the invert of the pn code right you can see so this is the sequence how we are getting the spreaded signal so here we see this is the spreaded data so this is the same thing uh, which is mentioned here the, so this is the output which is shown here so at the this is all about at the transmitting side right so this is at the transmitting side which is transmitted by the transmitter now at the receiving side again so because at the receiver we are getting this spreaded data and we are performing the xor operation between this pn code so here is a pn code with the spreaded data so this is the spreaded data we are performing the uh, again xor operation or the modulo to sum operation so when you are performing it so we can see if it is zero okay so and it if is zero so in this case uh, we will observe the zero here when we have the zero again zero we will observe here like that so when we are performing this one with this so we can see okay so when we have all the bits are same right so we can see if all zero zero is here zero is output one one is there one zero is output okay so because as i said uh, output of this one is the same pn sequence and we are performing the xor operation with the same pn sequence then what we will get we will get the logic zero okay so now when we have this spreaded data opposite of that one opposite of pn sequence when you are performing the xor operation so obviously when we have the zero one or one zero so we are getting the one so when we have this uh, this one and this one is inverted okay so in the output will be the logic one same thing will apply when we have the pn here and the same sequence here then logic zero will be there and so on so in this way we will observe the recovered data which was transmitted at the transmitter so this is performing the your receiver section so this is a receiver section uh, at which we are getting the expired data so another way of representing the same thing when we are multiplying the bit uh, with the pn code so we have the bit period that is a tm uh, one chip period is that when we have this bit and we are we are doing a multiplication with the pn code so this is the pn code so in this case what we have to keep in mind about that when we are performing this then plus 1 multiplying plus 1 we will get the one right when we have the one and minus 1 then we will get the minus 1 when we have the minus 1 and 1 so this is again minus 1 and when we have minus 1 and minus 1 so we will get the 1 okay so what is the meaning of that so this is a multiplication what i am talking about right so what is the meaning of that when we have the 1 because we are representing 1 as a 1 uh, as a logic 1 and zero logic will be represented as the minus 1 so in this case we can see one is here one is there the one into one obviously it will be one so we will get this one is spreaded data or we will get the this code one when we have the one again one we will get the one now we can see here this is the one okay this is minus one so when you multiply one and minus one what we will get minus one so we will get it here minus one so this is a minus one right so now when we have this section so this is the one this is one so obviously we will get the one now we have one and this is the minus one see this this magnitude minus one we will get the minus one up to here i think things are okay to all of you then we have this minus one and this is the plus one so when we multiply minus one and plus one we will get the minus one right so at this uh, what i am talking about it means i am taking the magnitude is the minus one right then and just take this example when we have this is a minus 1 right so this is a minus 1 and this is again the minus 1 then the output will be plus 1 right so this is a plus 1 so next is when we have this is a minus 1 this is the plus 1 then what we will get we will get the minus 1 so this is a simple multiplication of the magnitude uh, of magnitude level of the signal 
So this is the data signal. This is the PN code signal. When we multiply this one with this, then we will get this coded signal, which is a spreaded signal. And in the frequency domain, we can see if this is the uh, bandwidth of the message signal and this is the bandwidth of the PN sequence, then the output bandwidth will be the bandwidth of the PN sequence. So whatever uh, message, uh, whatever the bandwidth of the PN sequence is there, the same bandwidth of the signal will be spread it okay so this will be spread it according to this and we will get this answer so in in short we can say if bs is the bandwidth of the spread signal so it will be greater than the bandwidth of the message signal this is very very important result which we uh, we can observe in this case right i hope this point is clear to all of you so there is few points which we have to take care about when we talk about the pn codes and the generation so in that as i said about the uh, pn code so pn code is nothing but in this way this is the pn code it may be any sequence not the any sequence there is a pattern of that one i am just taking the example 1 0 0 1 like that 0 1 0 like this if this is a pn sequence so in this this duration so this duration is the chip we call this one as the one chip of the pn sequence right so pn sequence is 1010 kind of things and in that the duration of the one bit in the pn sequence is called the chip so this is the chip right and the chip rate will be what chip rate will be so this is a chip so this duration is nothing but the t chip this is the t chip and now the chip rate will be equal to 1 upon t chip so this is the 1 upon t chip which is more 10 times more just for approximation than the data bit rate right data bit rate right so in this case we see that what is the t chip so t chip is the duration of the one pn uh, bit in the pn sequence bit and chip rate that is the one upon t chip that is very important to understand and then if we have n c numbers of the chips then in this case total chip duration uh, or you can say total pn sequence code will be n times of time chip suppose we have just like i said this is a one chip chip number one this is a chip number two chip number three and so on if this is nothing but the nc total number of chips then total then total uh, chip so total duration total duration of pn code of p n code will be what this will be equal to n c into t chip right so the same thing uh, we can find out so this total code we say this is the t code that is equal to n c into t chip so this is very very important result which we got in this so there are some of the properties of the properties of some of the cases in the operation of pn code in which first is the autocorrelation property of the dsss so this is the uh, direct sequence spread spectrum which is used for matching of the signal with itself right so it shows that uh, there is a autocorrelation this autocorrelation and c into t chip these are one these are one pn sequence another pn sequence in this the two pn sequences have the there should be the autocorrelation in this duration must be nc into t chip so in normalized way uh, this value is 1 and when uh, and this portion is the 1 upon nc so this autocorrelation should be maximal right so when we have the maximum autocorrelation it means the uh, whatever value we will get after normalization that will be perfect okay we can detect it at the receiver side properly if the cro co cross correlation value is more in that case it is very difficult to detect the particular original signal from the another combined signal right so in that is why the autocorrelation must be maximal okay so the formulas are given for that for the autocorrelation that is uh, r a tau is equal to 1 upon t code t code is nothing but nc into t chip and the limits 0 to infinity ct ct plus tau dt right so these are uh, tau is nothing but the delay of the code and this is the autocorrelation when we i uh, c and cj is not the same 
right so in this case the time shifting uh, based on time shifting we can discuss uh, we can talk about the autocorrelation functions so another very important topic in the pn codes that is the pn code property so first property of the pn sequence is the balance property so in this balance property what is that so in this balance property in the pn sequence when we have the 1 0 0 1 like that this sequence is there so out of these sequence number of fours will be uh, i mean one uh, one bit greater as compared to the number of zeros right suppose i have the pn sequence whose length is 8 right so 8 bits are there so out of these 8 bits we will have the plus 1 will be of 4 and the zeros will be 3 maybe uh, okay suppose uh, not the 8 it cannot be 8 i am sorry for that it will be 7 okay it will not be a even number it will be only the odd number which we have to take care so in that what will happen uh, num a number of ones will be 4 and number of zeros will be 3 okay so it means that is 4 plus 3 7 so if we have the odd number of the pn sequences so out of this odd numbers the number of ones will be greater than the number of zeros by 1 so that is the balance property which we can think about it so the example of that one is if this is the pn sequence which is of uh, the 15 bits so in that the 7 uh, bits as uh, 7 are zero so we can count it out 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right and number ones must be greater than this one this value that is must be 8 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so number of ones are 8 and number of zeros are 7 so this is nothing but the balance property then we have the run length property in the run length property uh, what we have in every period every period of the pn sequence like that we are taking the same example which we have taken here 15 bit are the pn sequence so in that 15 bit half of the uh, i mean according to this run length property one half of the same size will be there just think about it for that uh, if we have the total length that is n is equal to 15 okay in that the run length if we have a run length run length run length that is equal to 8 so total lengths are 8 right so out of 8 one half will be of one uh, of length 1 it means the one half means 8 by 2 that is equal to 4 so 4 will be the will of length 1 length 1 means only 1 will be there or only 0 will be there there is no sequence of the 0 0 or 1 1 like that so we can think about it okay so in this uh, just make it the 15 first this will be the 14 so this is a 15 now right okay so uh, if we have this a sequence so what we will get half of 1 2 3 and 4 so these are of for length 1 right now second is when we uh, second is the half and 1 fourth then the 1 fourth of this run length so run length is 8 so 1 fourth that is 2 will be the sequence which is of length 2 so we can see here first is this one 1 and the second is this so this is the length 2 right and this is also of length so 0 0 1 1 i think this point is clear and then 1 eighth have the length 3 okay so in that 1 eighth that is the 1 which is of length 3 so we can see here if anything which is of length 3 i v i we have added 1 here right so in this only this one is of length 3 right and last and so on it means because we have to make uh, so you can count 4 2 and 1 how many lengths are there 4 6 7 till now 7 lengths are there but what we have we have the length 8 so for that one what we have to do and finally we will do the 8 by 8 again we will get the 1 so one one more length is there which is of length 4 so we can see one left that is 1 1 1 1 so this is the uh, length this is of uh, length 4 in the run length so we can count it here now so the 7 4 2 1 and then 1 it is become 
is equal to eight. So this is the way how we can uh, find the run length property. An autocorrelation property in the autocorrelation of a periodic sequence is the two valued periodic or the binary valued. So it will depends on this formula where R eight tau is equal to one upon n c number of agreements minus number of disagreements in comparison of the one full period. So when we have uh, this type of sequence, so agreement and disagreement. I uh, will in short I will tell you if we have the zero zero one one. So in this case, this is the agreement. It means the first pn sequence and second pn sequence. So in this way, uh, we are getting zero in first and second zero. So both are same. So this is the agreement. If we have the zero one and one zero, so in this case, this is the dis disagreement, right? So we have to count in the pn sequence and then we can put it into the this formula. Number of agreements will be uh, this will be when we have the zero zero and one one. And this agreement will be when we have the zero one or one zero. So in this way, we can put all together into this, and we can get the auto correlation. One of the one way of finding the auto correlation in this portion, right? So these are the very very important topics in the pseudo noise course. So I have to go through it. Next point in that is the how to generate the PN sequence, right? So first method uh, which is important and is given the syllabus as well. Maximum length sequence. So there are the other methods also. Walsh Hadamard sequences, Gold Core sequences, Kasami Core sequences. So these are the methods which are popular methods which are used to, for generation of the uh, PN sequences, right? In the spread spectrum transmission. So here we will only discuss about the maximum length pseudo random code. So in that the this code is nothing but the LFSR. So this is the linear feedback shift register. In that, uh, we use the feedback section. Section in the feedback, we do the uh, modulus two sum operation, and then again uh, the feedback will be there from the output. So in this, the period of uh, n of uh, if the period of m sequence is n c chips, then n c is nothing but it is the n c is equal to two to the p minus one. So p is So here, uh, this one uh, we can write it like uh, if things are okay. So I uh, we can change it as the n, right? So here is a small n is the number of the stages in the code generator. Okay, so how many stages are there? So in place of p, this is the small n, and n c is the n c is the total length of the p n code, right? So this p n code just in the previous example we have taken. As the fifteen, right? The PN code was fifteen. So when we use this expression, so if we have n is the number of stages or the number of flip flops as well, so we can say n is the number of flip flops, right? Flip flops or the stages or the memory elements. So in that case, we can find the what is the number, what is the PN codes. So this PN, you can put the values of n. That is, you can put the value of three, four, five, six, and based on that, we can get this sequence. Seven, fifteen, thirty-one, sixty-three, one twenty-seven, two fifty-five. These are the length of the PN code. Okay. So in that, the autocorrelation function of M sequence is periodic in nature, and it it is assumed that only two values are there, as we have just mentioned the previous slide. The one value will be the one, and second in the bottom one, it will be the minus one upon n. So this will depends upon the auto correlation between the two sequences. Okay, so how it is auto correlated? There, there should be minimum auto cross correlation and the maximum auto correlation. Then only we can detect the signal at the receiver side. So this linear feedback shift registers it can be implemented in the two ways. The first method is the Fabonacci implementation, and second uh, Fabonacci and second one is the Galois implementation. So in the both the ways, the modulus two operations is performed at the feedback level. So in the Fabonacci implementation, the shift registers which are arranged in simple fashion, in which the binary weighted modulus two sum of a taps is fed to the feedback to the input side of the uh, where the original signal is given. In the Galois implementation, it consists of the shift registers. The, the content of which are modified at every instant or the every stage or every step of the 
feedbacks okay so how it looks like so in the fabonic implementation so first is the typical pn code generator where we are using the different uh, flip flops and after that this after uh, using the flip flops we can get the transmitted sequence and this sequence formula that is which we said to keep our n minus 1 so n is the number of stages okay so in this case the sequence which will be generated if we put the n is equal to 3 so 8 minus 7 so nc value will be 7 at n is equal to 3 so this is a simple case right so in this implementation in the fabonic implementation we can see that h0 is and the hp so these are the weights uh, which are the weights of uh, the signals right which is some so the weights are what weights are nothing but the scaling factors right so when we are performing this here and of h0 from here so when you do the modulo 2 sum and the output of this one will be the input for this and the output of this one will be input for this and so on okay so we are performing the uh, this operation modulo 2 sum at the feedback level but when we are performing the modulo 2 sum at the galois implementation in which the after the first stage we are using the this modulo 2 sum operation and output of this one will be the input to the stage 2 right so the difference here is this is the feedback so this is the feedback to the input size right Okay, so whatever the output is come here from here, so it will go to the input of the first stage. But here, when we are performing the operation of weighted sum, so output of each weight, uh, each each weights will be the multiplied with the mixture of modulo two sum, and then it will go to the input of the each stage. So each stage will be affected in the Galois implementation in the LFSR. So LFSR is used for generation of the PN code sequences, right? So in that in SSM that uh, which we have the direct sequence spread spectrum in which as, as we said these are chips. Chips are nothing but the PN codes. Okay, so single PN code is a chip, right? When we have the number of NC that is the number of chips into the PN code. So the code rate is nothing but the inverse of the chip one chip duration so this is all about which it is used here dss s and this is the same mechanism which was used in the ssm where the original signal is there and it is multiplied with the pn sequence and the output is the spreaded signal whose bandwidth is greater than the original signal okay so this is a basic idea about that which can be represented into this diagram as well when we have the original signal and it is multiplied with the chip generator so this chip generator as we have discussed here here this is the chip generator right so two implementations as we have discussed galois or the fabonaki so this any of these will be used here to generate the pn sequence and simply we multiply it in the modulator then it is spread it out here right so same thing is mentioned here when we have the original signal it is multiplied with the pn codes and thus when one is there then in that case we will get the spreaded signal right from zero again we will get the spreaded signal and so on so same implementation as we have discussed in the ssm the same is the dsss okay so at the receiving side in with the prerequisite of the digital communication section we can see here this is our spread uh, this is the uh, psd power spectral density uh, at which i which we are getting it at the receiving side and uh, in this case this section 2 es upon ts is nothing but that this is the complete amplitude of the signal which we are receiving as a receiver mt cos omega 2 pi omega uh, omega ct or uh, this is nothing but the omega c or the 2 pi fc plus theta so this is the carrier signal this is the message signal it is multiplied the modulated signal is there and then we multiply with the p n sequence it is detected here and after that we are using the pn code generator at the receivers which will use to remove the this pt so this is the output which we are getting here at this point right so this wideband filter this filter is used to take the section of the bandwidth uh, of the signal which we need to uh, we, uh, we need to uh, i mean detect it right which we need to filter out for the demodulation purpose 
ओके सो पीएन जनरेशन देन वी आर यूजिंग द कॉरेंस फेस शिफ्ट की और डिफेंशियल फेस शिफ्ट की डिमोडुलेटर and the output received signal will be here the original signal which was transmitted there so at this point what we will get we will get the empty right so same signal which are transmitted we are getting at the receiving side so in short at the transmitter section first it will be use the pn sequence then modulation will be there after modulation signal will be transmitted at the receiving side first it will use the band uh, band first filter to take the section of the signal and then it will pass through the pn code and then the modulation and after modulation we will get the original pn sequence uh, original message signal okay so in this spectrum diagram also we can also see when we are receiving the signal here after using the band uh, wide band filter the signal width will be large as we said before using the pn code the signal this is nothing but the your bs right there is a message uh, spreaded signal whose bandwidth is like this and interference is added in that in, this is all about in db okay so when we are using the pn code so after using the pn code uh, we are using the uh, narrow band signal and here we are using the uh, coherence band phase shift key so this is used to mitigate this uh, this interference this is mitigating or the lower down the or the averaging the interference and we will get the this particular signal so this is the your processing gain exactly so in uh, in this way we can say that the processing gain is the bs divided by the bm right so this bs is the spreaded signal bandwidth and bm is the message signal bandwidth so in this way we can find we can get the uh, we can improve the processing gain so so after ds dhss we have some of the limitations like we can use only the coherence detection in the ds and d triple s or we and we can use the only bpsk signal right by phase or the quadri phase uh, modulation techniques in that right near far problem is there in dss and this uh, limitations or the errors can be reduced when we are using the frequency hopping spread spectrum system so in that the very simple method is there when we are using the fhss so in that what is happening we are simply modulate the signal at different frequencies in a given time period okay so in the previous case when we are using the dhss where we are using a single frequency to modulate the signal but here in the frequency hopping spread spectrum we use the signal and we spread we modulate it with the different carrier frequencies so this carrier frequencies it will be m right so we complete wide band is divided into the small chunks of the sub carriers okay so for which we can modulate the signal so this thing is happening here if s1 signal is here and s1 signal is here so the same signal s1 is modulated at this frequency and the same signal is modulated at this frequency maybe this is f1 this one is the f2 this one is f3 this one is f4 so in this way at the different levels uh, the same signal will be modulated and it is transmitted so that is why we require this because we if if any intruder wants to fetch or intercept this information so when this guy is trying to fetch information from this frequency so in this case this will be hopped to the different frequency so hopping is nothing but the hopping uh, change of frequencies so uh, the method for that which we have the k bit pattern so same uh, how to uh, uh, create the hops so for that we have the frequency synthesizer uh, which will be used to give the pattern for a particular frequency so if this is our pn sequence and for this pn sequence we are providing the frequencies for that 101 for that we can choose uh, we can get it from here this table uh, 101 700 kilohertz at the at which the we can modulate the signal 111 so for that we have the frequency 900 kilohertz 1001 so for that 001 so this one is the 300 kilohertz so if we have this type of pattern so this is the range uh, we can hop the frequency from here to here here to here like that so it is very tough for the intruder or the third party to um, get this signal 
original signal right so that is why this uh, scheme are used in the uh, in very efficient manner right so same frequency tables are will be mentioned here only so how to choose that so this bit patterns will come in from here okay so in uh, the same thing where we are using the message signal and it is we are using the pn code generator we multiply with this synthesizer then we do the frequency multiplication at this and then we transmit from the transmitter receiver section the same procedure is there the difference uh, here is additional blocks which we have early gate and the clock uh, code loop filter is used which is used for the clock synchronization so these are some of the differences uh, you can go through it what is the basic difference between the slow frequency hopping and the fast frequency hopping in short uh, what is important in that then slow frequency hopping multiple symbols are transmitted in one frequency hop but in fast frequency hopping multiple hops are required to transmit one bill one symbol only okay so one or more symbols are transmitted over the same carry frequency one symbol is transmitted over the multiple carrier in the different hops symbol rate is equal to the chip rate hop rate is higher than the symbol rate hop rate is lower than the symbol rate and here the hop rate is higher than the symbol rate jammer can detect this signal if carry frequency in one hop is known and here a jammer cannot detect the signal because one symbol is transmitted using the more than one carrier frequency so obviously fast frequency hopping is more efficient on which we can work on efficiently okay so this is the example how to get this frequency hops control codes these are frequencies which we can get it based on the uh, different codes like for 000 we have the 9.75 we can see for 110 we have the frequency hop that is 6.75 and so on so we can go through this very simple example similar to that time hop spread spectrum in which we just divide the complete time frame in uh, complete time into the time frames and this time frame contains the time slots and this particular time slots is used for the modulation so one time slot is used for the modulation of the signal in all the frames we have the different time slots and one of the time slot will be used for the modulation purpose only at this in the one frame two slots will not be used for the modulation purpose so that is why they have just simply mentioned and when uh, one slot is using for the modulation the previous detected signal will be burst into the particular time slots right so same thing is mentioned here input data spreading pulses outputs xor operation they have performed simply uh, in this diagrams right so i hope this point is clear to all of you and i believe that when you go through this uh, video lecture and some slides which i have just mentioned it will help you to understand the this different techniques and the last hybrid spread spectrum where they are using the different combinations of uh, ds fh uh, in the frequency hopping time hopping systems right so they so that is why the they have taken the advantages of these different uh, techniques for the spread in the spread spectrum modulation so i hope this point is i mean this lecture is clear to all of you I, if you have any doubt please write it into the comment section thank you very much